Thank you for staying with us on the breakfast. We continue this conversation now. We begin with uh, Nigerian youths calling for an end to SARS, to police brutality and extrajudicial killings taken to the streets of Abuja, painting end SARS on the floor of the Nabdi Azikiwe International Airport entrance. The protesters also stormed the headquarters of the Nigerian police force to draw similar graffiti while chanting solidarity songs. In the same vein, the protesters vowed not to back down on their demand for justice for all victims of police brutality in the country, including those that were killed at the Lekki toll gate in Lagos last week. Joining us live to talk about this latest development is Ariwo Dari Atoye, activist. And also joining us is Lemi Urebe, coordinator, Make a Difference. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, let, let's uh, kick off with your reaction to this uh, continued uh, move. Uh, let me see if I can get a, a comment from one of the protesters, um, the coordinators of the protesters, who said the change we want will not be forged on a negotiation table. It will be forged on the streets. No going back. Uh, just uh, to paraphrase, I'll start with you, um, Ariyo. What is, what is your thinking with this emergence again? Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I must first um, react to the Northern Governor's uh, wrong assertion and uninformed position that the NSAS protest uh, was designed to, or probably has been hijacked to topple the Nigerian government or undermine the government of uh, President Mahmoud Bari. There is nothing like that. It's just their figment of imagination. What they've been trying to do is that they are afraid that this could actually make uh, the youths in the north who have been oppressed, deprived, and who are hungry and angry to also seize the moment to also call for reforms in the north. All right, but Ario, we, we will come to that there. part of the conversation. I, I want us to take this as chronologically as possible. And that is why um, I'm asking you your comments to statements like no going back, um, what they, the demands cannot be found on the negotiating table. Uh, what worries you about this latest um, stance and the, you know, the, the re-emergence of the NSARS protests? All right, so uh, right uh, Lemmy, could you take it on, please? Okay. Um, Hello? I really, I really must um, side with the youth in terms of uh, the comment that um, these demands cannot be by the negotiation table. Because, again, um, it's not a contract uh, negotiation between the youths and the Nigerian government. Instead, the youths have said, among other things, reform the police, end SAS, do not re-crisis SAS as what. Um, there is nothing particularly to negotiate other than really looking at the demands, since the president has already said before now that they have accepted the five uh, points demands made by the youth. What they ought to do is to look on their own as government at the possibility of reflecting those demands in the police reforms that has been requested. For instance, what do we want to negotiate when it comes to the welfare of the police, uh, uh, members of the police uh, force? Do we want to negotiate how much they will be paid? Do we want to negotiate the fact that all policemen's life matter and as such, there should be genuine insurance cover for them? Do we want to negotiate about the fact that policemen deserve to be well equipped? Some of these things will end up being just rhetoric when we call the youths. The youths are not asking that they want to be paid. Again, the NSAS protest beyond the police is a symbolism, okay, for also the demand for good governance. Do we want 
as government to call the youths together to also negotiate. There is no meat cause when it comes to the demand for good governance, an end to impunity, an end to police brutality, a reform of the police for welfare of the police uh, men, uh, officers and men to be uh, improved. What negotiation is needed for this? I think government must leave this whole idea of its traditional cause of wanting to distract and detract from the objective of the NSAS protest. NSAS protest symbolizes a new awakening of citizenship to its power to call government to account. And that is what the protest has done. It has reawakened even the sleeping older generation to say we must take control of our country again by making government accountable. So I agree that government should go about enforcing these uh, five uh, demands rather than calling the youths to a, a table as though the youths are seeking to negotiate a contract for themselves. I'm going to go to uh, Dari Atoye now. Um, I, I, I want you to you know, continue the conversation from the statements with regards to the five demands, the five for five, and if, even if you know, there's also a crowd, uh, a group of people who don't even agree with the five for five um, in the first place. But let, let's start with that. Um, I saw yesterday uh, E4I, I think um, Enough is Enough Nigeria, posting uh, their rating with regards to the implementation of these five demands. And the only thing that they left out as not implemented was um, increase in the salaries of uh, police um, officers. So I want your thoughts on how much has been achieved that would maybe prevent another NSAS protest. How much has been achieved with the 545? And then second, bear in mind, there are still videos showing security agents brutalizing citizens in the last few days. You must have seen the soldier flogging the lady on the, on the floor in public um, because she was allegedly indecently dressed. You must have heard also of those who had their hair um, cut you know, in, on the streets by also military officers in Ibadan. Um, the whole umbrella of police brutality, I believe, is where the NSAS protest was going. So how much has been achieved, really, that should prevent another protest? Well, I must say that um, whichever intervention that has been made, whatever anything that the police authorities of the government have done, and I think at best is sheer tokenism. We have not seen an holistic intervention or response from the government, even though what's enough is enough has been ticking in terms of ticking the, box, uh, the boxes for the 505. Uh, it's just... Uh, just to show that, yeah, the government is doing something and uh, we are actually monitoring what they are doing. But in the real sense of it, this reform is not deep in terms of the way they are going about it. If it is deep, you won't have seen what we have been seeing in the last couple of days. What that means is that if in the middle of those protests, because those protests is on either online or offline, and you are, we are still witnessing this sort of harassment, including moral policing. Now, what we've seen so far, you will know that there is a special, now, it, 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 is, it has not exposed one thing, that there are a group of people that actually may be giving order to the police or to the soldiers to do what we call moral policing. A soldier man has no right whatsoever to shave the head of another person or to whip a lady for so-called alleging decent dressing. And this is exactly what we're talking about. The leadership is still not committed. For instance, if based on what happened in the last couple of days, and the president has said that that police officer should be dealt with, that soldier should be apprehended and dealt with, then he will send the right signal. No statement whatsoever from the, uh, I mean, the, the, the authorities, even though we heard that the, the soldiers, one of the soldiers have been arrested, or the soldiers who are, who, the soldiers who, are, who harassed the, the lady have been arrested. But it must go beyond that. As far as I'm concerned, the five for five, the implementation is still being done in a piecemeal without any 
full and total commitment. And the most paramount aspect of this is the welfare of our police officers. No policeman should have less than 100,000 in today's Nigeria. I, I repeat, no police officer should earn less than 100,000 in today's Nigeria. What about life insurance? What about medical insurance? What about all their needs that are very important for this police? They are human beings like us. They deserve the best from our country. They deserve the best for our nation. Now we see that the policemen are saying they don't want to go on the street to do one or two things. Blame their superiors and the government for it. Because it was this same government that told them to stand down when agents of the government brought in talks to harass NSAS protesters. Now, the talks that they brought in now turned out to be, you know, their own albatross because the leadership of the, the, the police authorities, I mean, the police authorities, the leadership of Nigerian police did nothing when talks were ferried into Abuja and some other places. They told these police officers to stand down. And when you give a foothold to evil, evil will mutate. Evil will spread, and evil will even undo you that has allowed you to have a full tool. That's what people, these people don't understand. By allowing evil to thrive in our, in our society, how do you explain the ferrying of bandit, I mean, of a hoodlum, and passing through uh, Aso Drive where you have the yellow house, that's the, 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 the DSS headquarters, and nobody stopped them, nobody apprehended these hoodlums, they ferried them into Abuja? You should, they should expect a backlash. And today, these same people have turned around to burn police stations to loot and to kill because some of them have scores even to settle some of those police officers. Now they want to blame NSAS protesters, and which is not true. All so right. what we are saying is this. The reason why some young youth are again back on the street is just to remind them that, look, we know the kind of government that we have in Nigeria. After a while, they will leave it. They believe there's another issue will crop up that will allow them to actually, you know, put aside whatever the agitation is. And that is why initially when I started this conversation, I, I, I condemned what the Northern Governor said about the issue of uh, 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 NSAS. Because what they are trying to do is to create an atmosphere for, for treason, which is capable of being used to, uh, to arrest NSAS protesters. And those All right, hold on, Mr. Atoyi. That was why I started on that friendly. He so really wants to speak about that. So we'll just um, uh, let you go ahead. Go on. And let him go just on. to cr um, create a clarity to what he is referencing, there was a communique uh, by the Norton leaders who are alleging that uh, separatists hijacked the NSAS protest and that they, they were targeting a regime change. That's um, uh, the position of the Norton elders, and they dismissed the uh, NSAS protests as being a subversive. So um, go ahead, um, Mr. Dari Atoye, for, I mean, your position um, is a condemnation, but could you broaden that up a bit? Yes, thank you very much for this. You see, people must understand the political intricacy of what the Northern governors are trying to clear. What they are simply doing is this. I can understand their pain and frustration, and it's because they have shown incapacity to govern and to lead their own people. Therefore, because when you look at it not today, you see millions and millions of angry and frustrated youth. They are afraid that this tsunami, a tsunami that will soon come one day, will actually erupt in the north and will hit them, and there will be a break in the dam of this frustrated young people. So what they are trying to do is that by bringing, they tried a, a religious uh, 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 connotation, now they are bringing politics into it, accusing the NSAS protesters of trying to topple the government. All of this, they're trying to revolve this around the fact that to buy sentiment. And what they are doing is that they are just buying time. They can't stop what is going to come in the north if there is no good governance. So I can understand this conspiracy from the northern governors alleging the NSAS protesters of trying to undermine the government. Some, in the middle of those protests, some governors were accused of ferrying talks into Abuja. The reason being that they wanted to use this, you know, turn it into a north versus or south thing, to turn it into an ethno-religious thing. That, and that is why the isolated cases where we have seen in some states are uh, being used, you know, uh, uh, as a basis, you know, to define this protest as a religious thing or uh, a north versus or south thing. It is totally untrue. Okay. Christian Muslims, north south, have been at the receiving end of NSAS, I mean, of, of SARS operatives, of police brutality, and they must keep it at that. So it, it, is, it, is, it is a fight back from this ravenous ruling elite who are making our country 
simply ungovernable by 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 misgovernance because we should blame them. And that is one that is why again they are also trying to attack the social media. Did the social media contribute to banditry that is affecting the North? Let's tell ourselves the truth. Well, social media used to topple the Nigerian government in 1983 when General Buhari, you know, plotted coup. Was social media there? These people don't want to face the reality that there is vast government and misgovernance. And they should not blame ENS as ENS has come to expose all the fault lines that is actually in our nation. And we are telling them that police brutality must stop. Right, and the northern governors now. should forget about whatever uh, schemes they are trying to do. It will not work. And that, at that best, I want to quickly step in here. Um, okay, all right, thank you. I, I want to quickly step in here and uh, let's uh, bring in um, Salemi Ugebe once again. Um, I, I want you to share your thoughts on the uh, judicial panel of inquiry that, of course, has been set up in different states. Um, do you think that there sh the protesters should have faith in those panels of inquiry and um, hold on? Okay, um, when the National Economic Council ordered the um, or directed or advised governors of the 36 states to set mm -hmm. up the judicial panel of inquiry. I am on record to have said that um, the National Economic Council even lacks the power to so do. Because again, um, you cannot put something on nothing. One, the police that they seek to investigate through those judicial panel of inquiry is a federal agency. The governors do not have authority over the police because it is not state police, it is federal police. Now, how do you seek to investigate issues around the NSAS protest and total brutality and sundry issues with federal agencies that are only answerable to the federal one. And you would see that this uh, point that I, I am making, that I made and I'm making again, came to the fore when the Nigerian army said they were not going to make themselves available to the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry because they do not take orders from the state. We, the whole idea of setting up panels, if you want to set a truth and reconciliation commission, because again, the judicial panel, okay. that's, it will amount to a trial. So after all of the go, for, uh, back and forth, it will end up maybe a, a panel that makes recommendation for this person's trial or that person's trial. But already, the Nigerian army to come account for its ignominious role in the lucky shooting and killings, okay, has said we will not make ourselves available because we are not answerable. Uh, 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 so do, do you think that the, do you think the NSAS what protesters can be see done these things? It's at the federal level, perhaps. Yeah, they said to not Let me hold on. What I'm trying to get is do you, do you think the NSAS protesters? see these points that you are making and that's one of the reasons they may not be willing to back down uh, okay so i was saying that at best because the agencies that are sought to be investigated are federal agencies not subject to the state uh, governments we need to know that one which uh, directed that they set it up lacked the power to so do National Economic Council deals with issues of the economy. So ordinarily, they can derive the power to set up from the Federal Executive Council as chaired by President Muhammad Buhari. That's one. Two, I mentioned that the fact that the Nigerian army already said they are not even responding to Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry also goes to show why it is just going to be a normal jamboree where they lack the power of force to even summon anybody from the Nigerian army. And they need to, if we are going to do and get past the NSAS protest, the ignominious rule of the Nigerian army in willfully 
deliberately shooting and killing Nigerian citizens, holding on to the Nigerian flag and singing the national anthem. They must be brought to book. They must be brought to justice. And the way to go about it is not this panel. There is enough intelligence. If the federal government wants to show that they are committed to citizenry of Nigeria, then they, by now, would have gathered their intelligence and decisively, decisively, first court martial the soldiers who are involved in this, even the chief of army staff in a society where the rule of law, where good governance, where civility is, are the values that we play up, the Nigerian uh, army, the chief of army staff should no longer be on seat, even if just for the lucky killings. All right. However, we are still playing the ostrich. We are still playing semantics. We are still playing with the lives of Nigerians as if they don't matter. They do matter. The Nigerian youths have insisted that this time they are not going to shit their sword. But candidly speaking, so they do not accuse the Nigerian youths, the ANSAS protesters, of being the ones who did not give them time to implement the five uh, demands. It is my candid view that we take this off the street and engage government intellectually, even though I dare say that the president and his minders, I do not know if they even appreciate that level of engagement. Okay, Mr. Because Ogeri, again, we, we need to give some talk time to Mr. Dari. And end to police brutality. All right, we need to give some talk time to Mr. Dari Atoye. Um, uh, quickly, just referencing uh, what we talked about earlier on the Northern Governor's position about the NSARS. There's been some reaction, and I want to uh, take uh, your um, um, thinking on it. Afeni Fere, Pandev, Ohane Zendibo have spoken. Even the NSARS protesters have been quoted as saying, not a leader's lack of understanding of issues. And then we also had the um, Ohane saying, restructuring has started. Not a leader's cannot stop it. What do you make of these reactions? Are they things that, I mean, are they kinds of conversation uh, we should be having? Or this is a distraction from the purpose of the NSAR's protests? Well, l let me say that it's, uh, it's not just a distraction. Uh, um, it's, it's an attempt to um, probably uh, fake away the, the core issues, you know, or to, to water down and also to give it a different coloration. Um, look, the Niger Delta, uh, the agitators in the Niger Delta have said that we're also going to fight for justice, uh, that you cannot be restructuring Nigerian piecemeal and be granting a state like uh, Zamfara State the opportunity to control its own uh, resources, like the mining of gold and selling seem to the federal government. And I support the Niger Delta 100% on this, that if Zamfara can have the control of its own gold, Niger Delta should have control of its own oil. And I believe that part of the reasons why they are making all this kind of a statement is also to distract from there because they are afraid of what is to come. The North is playing a very bad politics. And they have their own as a president. They should also forget that post guari regime, when a Southerner becomes the president of Nigeria, they are going to lack you know, the, 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 the premise to be able to criticize that government because of this kind of a, this divisive narrative they are currently selling. But one thing I want to tell them is this. The answer struggle is claimed. The answer struggle is real. Police brutality is happening daily, including probably maybe this morning. And there is no, they are not feeling the heat. They are not at the one at the receiving head, these leaders, so-called leaders, you know, who are speaking as if they don't understand what is going on in the country. They live from their AC room to their AC car to their AC offices. They move from their state to Abuja to come and dine and wine. Some of them have not visited the local government, some of the local governments in their, in their own state. This is a region, the north, especially the northwest, that banditry is eating into that place every day. And they are not solving problems. And their problem is answers. Answers that is fighting for this brutality. I hope they will face, they will come together you know, and face the problem of hunger, the problem of insecurity that is ravaging, you know, 
the, the, the north right. instead so, of so them you know, trying to score political points. Uh, to but wrap things up, um, I'm, I'm, I'm told we have um, very little time left and I want you to speak on the, um, the start of this conversation and that's the resumption of protests in Abuja. Uh, some of the respondents that reacted to the uh, commencement of the protests um, expressed worry uh, that the resumed uh, street demonstration could lead to another security clampdown on innocent uh, civilians and they say it is unfair to make others suffer when we are not sure what the outcome of the protests would be. How would you react to this? And if you can do it in 30 seconds, I'll be very grateful. Uh, Nigerians should not be worried about the latest action of uh, concerned youth in Abuja. What they are trying to do is to paint answers in strategic location to remind the people in authority. It is not any sort of confrontation. The right to protest, the right to associate, the right to gather and still enshrine our constitution has not been taken away from us. Nobody should be worried. It is the people in authority that are trying to give this a different coloration, including their agents in the social media. So please, Nigerians, what is going on is not an affront, it's not an assault. It is a demonstration of youth concern that answers is answers and answers must work. All right. Um, thank you, Ario, Dari, Atoi, and uh, Lemmy Ugebe for uh, both uh, joining us and being a part of this conversation. Looking forward to another one with you both. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a All great right. day. Yeah, um, I don't know. Um, I, you, you, the protesters are still innocent citizens, you know, regardless of how we see it. But something that I would say is um, no, a, 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 a society without justice would always have turmoil, would always have these things. The government has admitted that 50 plus people died during the NSAS protest. Um, we're not going to get justice for all those people in judicial panels of inquiry or in, in panels or in negotiating tables. Um, there's multiple videos that you must have seen, you know, and the government, of course, must have also seen. Yeah, but there must be a process, Osage. Yeah, um, but, but we, we, th this we is, cannot this is say why... even, uh, even uh, when there is a war, both angry parties still sit at a table and have a conversation as to the way forward, On the... continuing. So, if you remember, weeks ago we spoke about, and I keep mentioning the body language of the government. The body language of the government doesn't show a government that really is desperate to fix the issues. The body language of the government doesn't seem to listen. There's so much information that is online that, and that is available. And if these cases aren't taken with the urgency that is needed to take them to show that, yes, we are sorry that these people lost their lives and we want the people who who um, killed them to face justice, then it's really not going On to... On that, I completely agree with Yesterday, you. There must, there must be evidence that they really want justice to be given. Um, just to quickly uh, wrap this up, the... There's something you cited uh, in, while you were questioning uh, one of the guests, and that's uh, that in spite of the NSAS protests, we still have videos of um, yeah. officers, you know, molesting civilians. I think this should not be taken with any sort of levity. Uh, the uh, security agencies must rise up and not just enough to announce that they've been arrested. That's what we hear. After the arrest, what follows? So like you said, expedited action is what will bring an end to these protests. Body language. That's really what it is. If, you're, if the body language of the government doesn't show that they are now angry enough, like the citizens have been angry, if they now don't show that they will start to take these things more seriously, we don't need to campaign for three days on Twitter to get one soldier arrested um, for such a, a terrible thing that he did. Nobody needs a, a Twitter campaign anymore if the government has started to take you know, these things seriously.